So originally, um, I originally named this because everything in my life is a pun. Uh, we don't talk about Bruno style, so we don't talk about syrup process. But I didn't want to do that if it was going to be here in the house on mouse because we get sued. Uh, so I, I, I went ahead and just went with that. The idea on this talk, uh, first I'll start with me. He already talked about me, who I am. And I'll get into my hand waving and the reason why I came up with the talk. So <clears throat> relevant information off this slide, 14 years in Emerson, the only reason I'm calling them out, I no longer uh, work at Emerson, uh, but that is where primarily my experiences with the CERT team and doing CERT things came from. So it's gonna be relevant at that time period. Also, I live in Pittsburgh. That'll come relevant later on when I start pointing out some stuff. So um, also I'm a father of daughters, so you know where my pain comes from. So why, well, here is where the um, caveats and hand-waving I'm gonna do on this. These are my experiences. I'm not telling you how you have to run a program. I'm not telling you, I am a, not a process person. I absolutely hate swim lanes uh, and process and writing down instructions. I'm more of a do fix kind of person. Um, and my wife is the same way. She's way better than I am at a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm not here representing any company, again, because I submitted this originally as Emerson and then I left Emerson. Um, I said, when they said, hey, we chose your talk, I was like, I'm not Emerson anymore. Uh, you want to just kick me off the thing? And they said, no, no, they, I think people are going to want to hear it. Which, so <laughs> you're stuck with this right now. Uh, so I don't have my old notes. I don't have like, okay, on this day and this time period, this is where I talked to this person and such. The impetus of the talk, so I was going to use, I'm using the information, public, our public cert notifications and my hazy recollection from being the person who had to write them uh, over the years. And reason why I did this is because it was born from <clears throat> like a lot of our stuff is conversations with other people and other teams, um, especially inside of Emerson. Emerson is a very large company, like most automation vendors. So we had our cert team, which I'll talk briefly very soon, was one of the first ones inside of Emerson. And then we would bring in other groups and then they would have to start learning how to do a vulnerability disclosure process or handling that kind of information and then putting information releases out to people. So they would bring me in at, or a couple of us key individuals who short strawed on this situation and said, what do you do? Or how are you answering this? So then we all collaborate around to it. So it's constantly onboarding new companies or acquisitions and stuff like that. And also finding each other in the audience uh, with other people. You're not alone. <laughs> You're, there's other people out there talking. So hopefully it's an education for you who are consumers of the information, what goes into the sausage making, but also if you have to do this, you're finally in the process or you're having to do this kind of, uh, lack of a better term, crisis communication. What does it look like? And what does it look like for someone who's had to do it? And hopefully you learn from all the mistakes I've made. So um, on this one, so what is a CERT? I keep looking back, I can look forward. The uh, CERT uh, back when we did it, it's not to lose little mints, candied mints you dig in your mom's purse to look for it during church and eat voraciously, no matter what was on top of them. Um, that's what I knew them as uh, we're going into this process. The CERT is this computer emergency response team Again, being Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon is Pittsburgh. So uh, my boss back in 2008, when I was there at, at Emerson, he said, we need one of these things. They just stood it up. We should probably do something similar. He campaigned for it in 2008. So we named ourselves the Ovation CERT Computer Emergency Response Team. Um, that has caused very big consternation with customers and even sales teams and our leadership, executive leadership, even up until this last year. Uh, what is a cert? What does it do? What's the point? Uh, some of the ideas was, well, if there's a ransomware outbreak, uh, either in, inside of our company or at a customer site, they'll just engage the cert. And like, uh, that's not how it's going to work. We're not going to be suddenly get into the mystery machine and drive down to help fix things. Uh, that, that's not the purpose of what we're trying to do. So then if you look at the next one, a P-CERT, when I say CERT and P-CERT to somebody else, uh, P-CERT is a product security incident response team. Still kind of a problematic statement. Uh, incident response has connotations, right? So the, the idea behind a P-CERT is now, the release we're telling you now, it's really just product security. And you'll see a lot more teams now calling them P-CERTs 
some C certs, computer and, and a security incident response, but a P cert, mostly out of uh, obligation to compliance. You'll see that's kind of basically baked into 62443 as part of you as a automation vendor, you're going to want to have vulnerability disclosure processes and vulnerability handling, and you need to be able to notify customers on a, on a regular basis or entire internal people or external people. So you have this P-cert process that you have to stand up. So if you hear someone suddenly have a P-cert, that probably came from requirement uh, and it's got, you got a bunch of stuff you can do and how it handles. Um, the last one there is my campaign. If you don't have uh, requirements to be a P-cert uh, and you don't wanna have certs, uh, then perhaps I always loved, Microsoft stood up a team called the uh, DART, which was a detection and response team. I, I campaigned really hard in 17 and 18 to try to get away from the idea of emergencies or incidents as being a reason why we want to communicate something. It's not always an emergency. It may be just, I need to get information to you. So I, I went to the idea of, we should name them diagnostics and response teams because a lot of team, a lot of our customers in the empower generation are standing up M&D centers, uh, management and diagnostics or monitoring and diagnostic centers. So if we were a diagnostic and response team, it's more of diagnosing a thing, giving you a response, or it may even consider if you squint really hard, that means we're respond, instant responding, but not really. It's providing a response, either we're responding to said event, or you are uh, helping people respond to said event. Um, if you were going to pick something inside your own company and follow this process to get ingest information, res provide response, uh, and how we're gonna contextualize and respond to it, I suggest Dart because it just makes for great slides for the, the executives to point at and notice the bullseye and how close you were to the bullseye and the little dart, it just makes themselves. So please, I mean, I, I, I still am gonna continue campaigning for this. I'm gonna get one dart stood up. And also one, one small tidbit in this, I went looking for a picture of certs. They don't make them anymore. So you wanna really feel old. They stopped making them in 2018. And at one point they're in a black market each individual cert was worth more than Bitcoin. So I, I don't even wanna know. My mom's purses back in the closet probably is a gold mine at this point. Uh, so to look at it, what we did, uh, here's a little bit of statistics on this. Um, our first alert was 2010. Uh, you can all guess if you've been around long enough what that alert was on. It was an alert basically saying not it um, on that one, but it still was an event. Uh, at the time period, we had just stood up our, our process, uh, and my boss, uh, who retired in 2012 and then gave me the reins, um, put out the first alert, and I worked on as a technical person, and I'll, I'll give my own self a title later in the, in the deck um, on what a kind of way I was responding to these things. Um, we had 45 total alerts since 2010. Um, that's both about four a year. I think really think about it. That's both uh, frequent usage of the of thing, but also very infrequent if you really look at it in both camps. Um, six alerts on our actual code. So stuff we really actually wrote uh, where it was actually things we put out alerts for. Uh, 19 critical, 19 advisory, and seven informational. Uh, we followed the paradigm at the time period because there's no requirements on how we label things at the time period to follow our own safety and our bug tracking systems. So category one and two are, these are bugs that are uh, prevalent throughout all systems and can actually cause complete catastrophic failure and safety and reliability issues, loss of life, et cetera, et cetera. So we would consider that a critical. Uh, an advisory would be ancillary products or, or ancillary systems. There's probably workarounds. It may only occur at a certain times if you squint to do things on the wrong day, that kind of stuff. So those were advisories. Now, you don't really have to take action today, but you probably should take action at some point. And then the seven informationals, not a whole lot of those, right? Were just, hey, did you know about um, uh, cosmetic issues or enhancement requests in our bug tracking system? But this are informationals. We thought we were gonna use that a lot at the time period, any kind of event that was happening in our space was a rare event. So we thought we were gonna be throwing out all kinds of informational events, uh, like, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? I probably, you probably didn't, it was this. So, uh, and I'll tell you why they didn't occur, occur, uh, occur very frequently for us. So um, 
that goes into when do you communicate about stuff? So you have to decide at, the, at right now. You can either do one or the, or the other. You can't do both. Either you're going to talk about everything you're doing and every event, or you're only going to talk about what's required. And But, but it's some, you can make the assessment on yourself if it's required or what you're requiring your end user or the reader, whoever's receiving this information, they have particular actions they must be met. So like you have special activities you must do. And I'll even give you some examples here soon of where that occurred for us and why we kind of decide that way. Um, both have good and very bad problems. Uh, in the talk about everything bucket, everybody knows about everything. You're constantly speaking, you're constantly telling them. However, when you have constant alerts coming to you, think about your system and you pick on people, Think about your Cisco's, your Microsoft's, your VMware's, whoever, where there's dozens, if not hundreds of vulnerabilities, uh, notifications throughout the year, you almost need somebody else to come tell you that one to this week is very important to you. So you're kind of going through the noise. No one's doing that pre-assessment of this is to require special action for you. Whereas if you talk to required, now it's on the person speaking to you. I've made the pre-assessment. This requires special action. And on a particular time period, please take care of business. But then people get mad at you because you don't talk about everything. Why'd you talk about this one? And you didn't talk about that one. And there may be not good reasons on why you're making that assessment. So you may want to turn your brain off and let someone else decide. I'm just going to tell you everything. And then you decide what's important. <laughs> so <clears throat> inside and outside the stakeholders for us, for me personally, is that you consider everybody's a customer of your information. So uh, a lot of the times I, I have just as much problem with people outside the company as I do inside the company. Frequently I would receive emails from executive leadership with just the link to Fox News or Bloomberg copied into the subject matter. No, no text, no is it a problem, just blah. And ask, you know, and then you need to write up in an analyst, like, what's going on? Um, so you have to understand there's oftentimes a motivation on a particular type of person coming to you for information at that point. Uh, internal business people may be looking for just business answers. Yes, no, good, bad, did you know about it? Uh, customers, I have a customer asking me, can you please stop making them ask me about things that don't require them paying me? Uh, so that kind of stuff. Outside, you might have researchers. And, you know, you want to always think about altruism. They're here to fix a bug. They're helping you out. Please don't get mad at me. Uh, but there's oftentimes there may be an extra, extra element to that. They may be looking for motivation for their motivations may be notoriety. They may be motivations might be to fix the bug, but make sure everybody knows they fixed the bug. Uh, I kind of said, I found it. Everybody look at how I found this. Um, Sometimes, and we've heard this in some companies, we have vulnerability research as business development. So they may be doing it as either a marketing attempt to show how their product can solve these kinds of issues, or they may do a marketing attempt to show how important they are and how smart they are that they're going after a particular vendor and you should talk to me because I'm smart. Um, and we've had some where it was almost ex borderline extortion where I have all these, this vulnerability, I have much more do business with us or we're going to the press. And that's happened frequently. Uh, recently, not even just to my organization. So you have those kinds of issues, uh, even though I'm talking to CISA as well, they're, they're just a middleman at this point. Uh, so their motivations is to get thing taken care of, listen to both sides, not get in the middle of it really, not make judgment calls, just tell me what's available and I'm not putting the stuff out at that point. So you want to make sure when you're talking to each of these individuals, you're using precise statements and getting exactly what they're asking for and only that because it will, can and will be used against you. Do not send out an email to somebody with responding to, you know, I don't know, that, well, that's really serious. We're going to be working on that next year. But that will be used against you and copied directly to the customer or directly to whoever because they'll tell you it's all off the record. It is never off the record. Uh, so make sure you're making precise statements, be a little bit weaselly. So here's some jobs that I feel like if you're gonna stand up a good team to do these kinds of things, again, 
you say team, but a lot of times we all know it's probably a team of one. Uh, so you may hold all the jobs, you may hold one of the jobs, but there's certain kinds of roles you have to, add to do with this, this kind of issue. You're gonna need somebody who's a scribe. You're basically gonna need somebody who's willing to write the words. That was always an argument of whenever we got into a situation and someone has to write something. All right, we all agree it needs to be written. Who's writing it? Dead air. So you're gonna to have to have somebody who can actually write, write legibly, uh, take coherent sentences, and, and provide the information, but also take those angry emails being passed back and forth and pull information out of it and put it into the report that's not just the angry email just copied in. Uh, so also you're gonna to need to take a similar kind of thing with a politician. These are the people who can talk to other individuals or other groups, get them to tell you information you need without knowing they are giving you information you need and get them upset. Uh, possibly listen to, uh, to concerns from somebody, get threat, lightly threatened frequently, and take that information in and say, I, I'm, gonna, I'm hearing you, I'm providing you information, here's how I can take care of it. And oftentimes they're the ones who just magically get the information so you can just get your alert out the door. Uh, you need a scout. At this point, the scout is somebody who has been gathering information, seeing stuff coming, because if you don't have somebody who's out there every day pounding the pavement, uh, metaphorical payment, uh, pavement, you will always be caught flat-footed with the, the did you hear abouts coming at you. So you need somebody who's constantly out there searching, constantly looking past even just reports coming from your trusted partners or taking a trusted partner and saying, you're my, you're my primary source. Make sure I know as quickly as you know, because I need to answer all of the, all these masters at this point. Then you need a technician. This is the, these are the people who are the doers. Uh, they're the ones who can kind of take an idea of what the problem is, conceptualize it. Here's the steps of how we can mitigate it. Yes, it's the problem. No, it's not a problem. Here's how we can fix it today. Here's how we can fix it six weeks from now, whatever it might be, how much level of effort it's going to require. And then I put this last in the big uh, bucket of need to know. Your, your first four are your primary circle of trust. Then you expand it out to the need to know is once you decide that you're going to engage the machine at that point, which is leadership or key individuals in world areas if you're a large enough company at that point, but just certain trusted people who can take information and properly provide it to other people so you're not constantly getting the same question over and over again from everybody. Or leadership, hey, we're putting out this thing. Legal, keep in mind you have to always loop in legal teams, and they do not like writing anything down just as a, just don't, don't have them review your stuff. They can see it, but they'll never write anything on it. So don't have them do it. So you're gonna have to have a lot of voice phone calls and in-person phone calls where they're a little bit squirrely and then you go off and do whatever you need to do, but just they're aware. And then your phone support is also your best friend. Uh, so you need to let them know this is happening. I'm getting you information as quickly as possible. I'll talk about here in a moment, but here's what we're doing. Here's some uh, key individuals who know something or, or gather them, log the calls and put them somewhere else so we can go back. So one of the primary roles I put myself in originally and then became when I became cert leader at the time period was a life of a scout. So constantly looking, if you wanna be a scout, constantly looking forward, social media is gonna be your friend and your, your enemy. You're gonna be constantly parsing through lots of tweets, lots of stuff, I guess now. I, maybe they're doing on TikTok uh, at this point. I'm too old for this stuff. But, the, but back in the late 2000s, I noticed that a lot of communications between researchers were happening only on Twitter. Like they would constantly talk back and forth, talk back and forth, talk back and forth. And then like a day or two later, it would go into a blog and then maybe back major news reports. So I spend most of my day going through all the different trusted blogs I have also some extra blogs just in case I missed something that I didn't notice. And I'll talk about an event that happened where I caught that. And, but also going through Twitter, thus stumbling through Twitter and probably stopping on every 50th or 60th tweet and going, hmm, uh, no, no, keep going. And that kind of stuff, just quick analysis. Because then at the per that person is scattered, you're, you're the, at that point, you are the watcher on the wall, the night's watch, whatever it is. And you're gonna have to make the, the assessment of, yeah, that's a problem and I'm wanting to tell everybody about it. 
because otherwise, if you're telling everybody about everything, they get they don't listen anymore. So you have to be able to ascertain this smells like the panic that we normally would see, uh, especially in the early days. That was a problem. Now, you know, like if we were looking in the mid to 2010s, uh, it's hard to say it that way, but you look in the mid 2010s, if the NSA came out with a tweet saying this is a serious bug on Windows, everybody stopped and went, what? Uh, if the federal government came out and said, this is an important, important patch you should put on, everybody went like, oh, okay, that means somebody's being hacked. Uh, now, with the forward leaning they have right now with their information sharing, that's more frequent. We have, again, the NSA doing TikTok dances. So uh, it, it's, it's not, it's not <laughs> I didn't even do one, but it, you still have to figure out what is going to be provide that enough panic level to, if you're not talking about everything. So when I say engaged machine, that was always a term I used inside the company, uh, especially with my wife who I worked with for a number of years. Um, is it time to engage the machine? Here we are, we're gonna actually put out an alert and get the whole thing written, get everybody all spun up and put something out. Um, step one is something you're probably gonna do no matter what, especially during a high profile event, something's the world's on fire events. Um, everybody's scared because there's a new vulnerability and a, a CPU vulnerability. And so you're getting all the pinged constantly, have you heard abouts or what are we gonna do abouts? Um, and especially now in the day of uh, regulatory compliance telling you, go talk to your vendor about something, we get constantly pushed with, uh, they told me to talk to you about this. So it's like, oh, great. Now we have to put a response. So what you're going to do is at least a reactionary statement. Yes, uh, of yes, we're aware. Here's a problem. Uh, should you worry or should you not worry? Just kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down and a generic timeline if we have to do any actions. Uh, generic timeline will probably be next patch cycle or we are, we're assessing. Hopefully you've already had a yes, no, thumbed up, thumbed down, and you got a little blurb of, we take security seriously and, and we are aware of it. And uh, then it's kind of like, yes, you use it, no, so we don't use it. So then they can do that quick, like Mr. Tucker would say, they're at the top of their risk funnel. Yes, no, is it fallout, fall out, and I don't care anymore. Uh, then your next revision of your, your actual alert, if you actually do put out an actual, actual alert at this point, and you're not putting them out all the time on everything, then you give your real actual educated answer to it. If we've done the analysis, here's our patches, or they'll be released on this particular date, the exact date you're going to do it, with specific recommendations on a save your system that we were currently designing for you. Here's some stuff mitigations you can do using the stuff you have. So you're actually given a real educated answer other than, you know, don't connect to the internet kind of stuff. So, which is the standard boilerplate kind of items. And then revision three largely is ignored and above. And most customers are probably never reading it. They have already done their risk assessment. The panic is over. They're on to the next panic. Uh, but you still, if you have like a, any like slow lagging uh, vendors, ancillary vendors coming to you, here's, here's some stuff we need to do. You put those in your next revisions to make sure you do your house cleaning and wrap and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through a few events that happened and what transpired with them and then try to make sure I end on time. So this one was uh, an unnamed before they decided to provide songs and websites and everything else and names for everything. Um, this was a vulnerability I saw hit a 44 con talk uh, called hack. You can hack the Mars rover uh, from, uh, from the earth. And they were so excited and they were high fighting themselves. There was actually remote code execution of VX works. Um, and I saw that and I went, Ooh, that's bad. Uh, and no one seemed to notice at all. And that, within that last year, we already had a couple of vulnerabilities and, and other things that people made a real big stink about and, and meaning as a, as a group, but this one completely under the radar. I raised the internal alarm. Uh, September 10th is when the actual article came out. They had the talk on September 9th. It was actually a local researcher group out, out of a, a University of Georgia, I think. Uh, I did like really big alarms. We're going into our holiday cycles of, of Thanksgiving and Christmas where everybody just pumpkins and doesn't do anything. Uh, so I was like, we need to do something. We need to do something. We tried testing and patches to VX works to prevent this from happening. I got uh, my president of my division spun up. We did a letter writing camp. We did, he wrote a personal letter to everybody. Uh, he, we had everybody be called, make it up our sales people, call the customers that could. could. Uh, then we finally released our notification after, uh, after Christmas to make sure everybody saw something. Didn't want to do it before Christmas because they would ignore it. 
So make sure I have Christmas. So it's like a long time period between when event happened and when, when we put our release. So like looking at this one, I'm telling you to do it within 72 hours, I'm in a reaction statement. And within one patch cycle, we'll have your thing. That's months. Uh, but we got three responses. Three people asked us for the CD. One person asked us for the CD and told us never to put out another alert again uh, because they were upset because we took out an alert and their IT team told them they had to take an outage to patch. Please be more mindful before you put out an alert uh, because that's a very problematic for us. So that they, right there is like treating me. Now that is an isolated case. And it is not indicative, and I'm not going to take that one individual angry phone call back to my president, don't alert me because I have to do thing as indicative of everybody uh, as a number of years ago. But it, it does train you of, I spend all this effort thinking it's a real problem and you don't care? Okay, well then I will adjust the, my cadence at this point. Uh, looking at this one, Eternal Blue Equation Group, Want to Cry, whatever you call it. Uh, for those who don't remember being around for that time period, uh, it's late 2016, things happened, both politically and not. Uh, and then in early the year, 2017, January time period, there was a whole lot of weird tweets going on and a group called Shadow Brokers out there. I'm not going to go for too much of it, but I'm just giving you a timeline. Then there was, for the first time in I don't know how long, and I can't find out how many people have said it, there were no pat Windows patches in the month of February. So everybody was like, what happened? And then patches came out in March. And then in April, Shadow Brokers put out the full thing. Uh, the, one of the things they tweeted they put in, in January was just a directory listing of folders. Then they put out their stuff on GitHub in April. That's when I put out, we didn't think, it was really like a problem other than Windows. I just put out an alert on our user forum and said, hey, this is really serious. These sequence of events was serious. Didn't want to put out an alert because people get upset about alerts. So I just put it out there. This is really serious. And uh, you really should patch. Uh, we already put our patches out for Windows in their March and some in April. Please put, please patch. Then May malware break, outbreak on, on a Friday, I think it was, uh, May 12th. And uh, our initial notification was already half written at that point because I had written, I just took my pog post, put in a notification <laughs> and then changed some words and put it out on Monday after I got legal to approve it. And then I got some angry emails at that point. But why did it take so long for you to tell us to patch on that? And then I got uh, generally snarky back at them and said, look, I told you two months ago to patch, uh, which was then I got told not to talk to the customer anymore. Uh, but the, the, which, you know, I, Whatever, was this one worth putting out an alert? Hey, something smells fishy here. This seems super important. Retrospectively looking at it, yeah, I should have probably put out an alert. I should have told people seriously, this is super serial, you need to do it. And please patch, please patch. And then, and maybe or maybe not, but it would have at least covered my own butt at that point using the terminology since I'm on the interwebs. Uh, so thinking about this one, world, another world about new bugs, meltdown specter. How many, this, this was the birth of our speculative execution vulnerabilities in CPUs. Again, complete panic. Again, over the holidays in January, everything happens in December and January. So buckle up. So, uh, the, then this hit, we had our, our initial research released in the third, uh, we, our initial release was on 11th. We had multiple meetings. There was a lot of meetings because I had a whole huge spreadsheets of what firmware goes with who. We don't really normally constantly test BIOS updates to, to firmware, who's going to get a firmware, who's not going to get a firmware, demanding from our hardware manufacturers like a Dell or, or some kind of Synology or somebody else upstream. Are you going to patch it? I don't know. Are you going to patch it? And then constantly going down the chain. Um, did this kill everybody? <laughs> is my question at this point. Are we, we are so many vulnerabilities down the road that they said this was going to, everything, everything has an Intel CPU or every, everything has a CPU in it, everything's vulnerable. And we're still how many years later with, I think still theoretical and some, there may be some non-disclosed stuff, but it hasn't, we, we haven't had the issues that the panic caused. 
So uh, solar winds, this one probably was the first one where we're in more of a more of a recent world at this point. Uh, this one again, being the life of the scout, seeing Twitter whispers in December of something going on, and people like, I you can't wait till we find out what you're having Christmas. And then and then like boom, it hits. Mandium blog hits right before Christmas, because thanks, guys. And then the uh, and then sys alert in December. Uh, you need to patch this, this is a super, super serious. We we and then the EISAC NERC directive uh, right right before Christmas. Uh, I'll write it on my right the day after my wife's birthday, thanks. Uh, and then uh, did we put out a notification? For us, no, we did not put a notification because we didn't use it in any kind of way that is not a visible. We knew the five customers we'd helped install SolarWinds on their systems. And the fun part on that one was when we called them up and, and, and any systems that we'd ever encountered SolarWinds Orion platform on, hey, do you know, have you seen it while you're on the field? We had also our field service, have you seen them? Uh, yeah, I know so and so plants using it. So we had we had them calls all day, every day, and calling the plant managers and saying, "You have this on your system. This is the problems. Are you okay? Do you need any help? What do you want me to do?" And most of the time, they laugh and go, "Ah, oh, we don't even take patches." Because if you remember, the problem was as you took patches, a vulnerable uh, library came down. So they were like, "Ah, it's not been patched in years." And they, ha 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 ha, and they, like just like heartbleed. It's just like heartbleed. I haven't been patched in years. Ah ha ha, and then boom, hang up the phone. So it was like, okay, well, good, good talk, everybody. Um, so that one is, it was more of a, an event, but most of the time it was just kind of brushed off. We didn't notify. Was it, did we need to notify? Eh, it would have been more of an informational at this point because it's not really going to affect the operation of our systems. We're not using it in a way that other people might be as a service. So it was kind of a, a judgment call at that point. Log4j, that was one of our first ones now where, again, talk to your vendors. It's embedded, world-ending, world-melting. Um, and that one is where it crosses the borders between, is it the product that you gave me vulnerable, but, or are you vulnerable? Now, it happened with solar winds to an extent and some other vulnerabilities prior to this, but this one was kind of almost the big mama on this whole group where we got questions on, uh, and the government was even saying to people, please ask your vendor if they're using it, too. Uh, question them, and which is hard for a global company, and you're one person at this point. I don't have visibility. I have plausible deniability of where it might be or might not be, and how much information I can give to you at that point. Uh, so our uh, the the notification, the actual research hit in the ninth. Notification came out less than a week later. Not great, not bad. It is before Christmas again. Hard to get a hold of anybody to do anything. And then we had our second and third revisions from there um, later this this year, actually. Uh, so that one still required some follow-on activity. You had to most upstream. We weren't using it our personally or ourselves on any kind of real product, but we still had ancillary products we're using it. And then we had the same situation. How much do we reveal if our, our IT team was using it somewhere in the world and how we get that information back and give you one answer for all business divisions? Somewhat difficult. So here, wrapping this up, um, if you end up having to do this, uh, my suggestion for you is to public, publish your communication rules and what your expectations and also going down a few bullets and your encryption requirements, uh, what you're going to do. So when, that way people outside and inside know how frequently you're going to talk, what you're going to be talking about, and how often you're going to talk. You know, I'm going to give you so many weeks from event. I'll assess it. You have to do that any kind of thing anyway if you're going to talk to outside Researchers just treat everybody like that. Uh, Encryption is a problem, a big problem, because everybody loves PKI, but it, it's a really great thing uh, until the guy who has the, the uh, private key is sick or coaching a softball game and can't get to his machine uh, right now to find out what Sissa just said to us, all right? So can you give me 10 minutes to go somewhere else? I can't leave the field right now. Uh, so, but, but that it, you, if you're gonna do something like that, you may actually wanna have a shared private key and public key that you have for your team. Uh, again, again, the whole idea of like get hit by a bus, what are you gonna do? Uh, codify your rules, undefined roles, who's gonna be your scribe, who's gonna do it, internal service level agreement kind of thing. You know, you can tell them you will answer me by this amount of time or 
people get maybe get fired, even though they'll never get fired, get angrily yelled at by management at that point. And find a collaboration site that works. I don't care if it's Teams. I don't care if it's SharePoint. I don't care if it's Zoom. Um, they all stink. Uh, so, but don't resort to emailing the same document version 5.2 slash underscore foos version two uh, and back and forth and trying to do document retention and, and management that way. So, and you're either going to get it fast or you're going to get it researched. You can't do both. And if you need any of your tips, again, look at some of the stuff that now at these days, you're not starting uh, fresh like I am. Look for some of the stuff that CISA has. If you don't like CISA or you're outside the US and you want to use other stuff, First Org or uh, ISA Europe has like an ISAC and a box and you can kind of use their ISAC because it is really just information sharing. So that's it for right now.